Olá, olá pessoal, muito bom dia. Estamos aqui hoje com mais um webinar muito especial falando sobre sustentabilidade em Mônaco. Espero que vocês estejam todos bem aí em casa, sei que estão com bastante conteúdo, espero que muito trabalho aí pela frente. Mas essa semana está começando e aí a gente está trazendo para vocês mais conteúdo aí inspiracionais e importantes. E hoje nós teremos aqui uma convidada bem especial que vai trazer para vocês aí várias ações, várias atividades, tudo que é possível de ser feito com relação ao tema sustentabilidade em Mônaco, tá? Então tenho o um prazer de chamar aí a Mic. A live vai ser em inglês, mas a gente vai ter um suporte aí para vocês, tá? E vocês podem fazer perguntas também. Ela vai fazer uma apresentação e a gente vai começar com a apresentação dela. Ela vai contando um pouquinho sobre a situação de Mônaco como é que tá lá, e aí vocês, durante, no final, a gente pode responder algumas perguntas que vocês tiverem, ok? Vamos lá? So, good morning, Larissa. Good morning, Miki. It's so nice to, hear, to have you here. So, we Thank are... you very much for inviting me, and bom dia to all. I understood the Portuguese, so that was good to start. So It's a very place. good start, actually. Oh, that's nice. It's an honor to be here with you today, okay? Because it's an important thing, it's an important subject we are bringing here today. So, first of all, just to beginning, uh, let's talk about a little bit from us. Uh, how's the situation in Monaco right now, Mick? Um, the situation, well, we are going through gradually that we're coming out of the lockdown. And in fact, last week on uh, the 2nd of June, it was the start that the restaurants were able to open again, of course, with very strong and health and safety measurements. So that was a good thing. Last week, we also had the opening of the uh, new, the running of the new Place du Casino and Café de Ripari also reopened and on Friday the Casino de Monte Carlo reopened as well. Uh, at present the gradually uh, opening is uh, going well and the government uh, yeah, will be yeah, releasing every time new updates as well right now uh, some beaches are going to start open people are able to walk so let's say step by step we are regaining some of our freedom and uh, going not Back to, I cannot say the new normal because it will be a uh, very new, it will be completely different, but it's a good way to start and we are happy that we are coming back. Indeed, indeed, that great news, Mickey. So gradually we are reopening again, right? Yes, and yes. Trying to live normally, the new normal. <laughs> yes, and the hotels are reopening as well. Uh, the, the hotels are reopening staggered, of course, during the whole complete lockdown. The Hotel de Peru in the Monte Carlo Bay and the Fairmont remained open. Uh, the Metropole will be opening on the 19th of June. Uh, L'Hermitage probably the end of the month. So uh, I'm sure uh, Larissa you will uh, update all uh, our Brazilian uh, friends on the developments of the hotels as well. But it's a, it's a good sign and we're hopeful. Yeah, sure, sure. And so, today we were bringing a great subject here, right, about sustainability, because you are, I know that you are expert on this. So, what do you think to start your, to start okay. your beautiful presentation? Okay, well, thank you very much, Larissa. Well, I'm expert not, but I'm very uh, keen on uh, sustainable values. I'm sure. And that was also one of the ideas when I started to uh, inspire me, which will be in October five years. Uh, we wanted to create as well an alternative concept of event uh, management and DMC company, and working with a different approach as well. And uh, right now, even nowadays, it's more actual. And in fact, of course, it's very short this seminar, and I already told Larissa, if you're interested, it will be a great pleasure to really set up something more for you as well, event organizers, how we're able to uh, organize more uh, sustainable events. The first part of the presentation, I did include all kind of forms, what you're able to do as well, uh, to start with, and of course afterwards I'm always at your disposal if you would like to have any uh, more information. And the second part of the presentation, um, I will give as well ideas and options what is possible to do here in Monaco. So Inspire Me Monte Carlo, we would like to connect you to the heart of the destination through special people, places and experiences. And I think 
every destination, uh, people make it special, places and experiences are as important as well. And that's combined together, we said as well, it must be an inspiration. And that's why I came as well the name of Inspire Me Monte Carlo. Nice, so let's try, start. So introducing shortly Inspire Me, five years ago, for us, it's very important to give the highest standard, but also adding added values to services. We would like to offer you really different things and to assist you with your program. Every program is unique. And we really like to tailor each program and to really make sure that what your desired outcome is reflected as well in the program, but also the values of a corporate company, if you're coming with a corporate company, also that is integrated. Uh, we are a team uh, of four persons right now and one to five. And um, I heard an airplane passing by. It's not a Monaco, but okay. <laughs> And we share some local knowledge. And we'd like to take our guests behind the scenes and really give them that once in a lifetime experience, which really they are not able to find in any destination. And with that, creating unforgettable experiences and a unique program, it's really the, the scope as well to engage, to inspire, to empower, and to enjoy, but also to have fun. And we have many uh, various destination contexts um, to open the doors, which normally remains closed. We are part of the DNC network, um, and we also we're very proud. We uh, received uh, recognition from Site Global, the James Shield Master Motivator Award, and we were recently uh, recognized by Condé Nast as a top travel specialist for Monaco. So that's real good news, and we would love to share that with you as well. Our values. So we strive for excellence in everything we do. We foster creativity and innovation through every project and we really like to work with passion, respect, but also with humor. We are an extension of you here in Monaco. I have no doubt about it. No <laughs> Thank you. you. No. So our mission, and I do want to put it out, we would like to become the recognized leader in once-in-a-lifetime and life-changing experiences by doing business responsibly, supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and reducing the impact of events on the destination. And right now we're going to explore that further together. Nice. Our vision to provide exclusive destination services that create a positive change in, society, in the community. The art of travel. This is just a brief overview of the various services we offer. We can see, of course, the incentive, the conferences, product launch, event consultancy, but we also like to do some different things, of course, the shore excursions, but you can see as well, photo shoots, trend safaris, uh, sports hospitality, and as well, um, let's say, exclusive experiences with the curated travel. And with the curated travel, these are really the unique experiences with a meaningful uh, significance as well. And that you will find later back in the presentation. So the destinations, we are based in Monaco, but we cover as well the whole complete south of France. We serve more than 13 destinations. We are a proud member of SITE, ATME, and support of the Sustainable Development Goals. And this year, I'm also, uh, for three years right now, part of the International Board of SITE. In our nearly four and a half years of existence, we did already more than 300 events, from small ones, from clicks, to more than 1,000 as well. We are boutique, but we are like the small events are as important as the bigger events as well. And our team has various uh, experience over the year here in the south of France. With all our events, uh, we support as well, I give the option to support local um, associations. It could be, for example, the Prince Albert uh, Monaco Foundation, which today is important as well with World Oceans Day, uh, the Foundation of Princess Grace, the Princess Charlene. And you can see the ocean cleanup, plants for the planet, but also other networks of planting trees. But with all our programs uh, doing in Monaco, we uh, completely offset the CO2 emissions. So even if you're not really engaged yet in doing sustainable events, we are. And we are offering always, let's say, um, electric 
transfers, for example. But in case of CO2 or set of all the other within the event, we, we plant plants and it could be from various associations here. Of course, uh, we, we want to protect children, which supports the United Nations Global Compact. And these are all different associations. But if you have a corporate company, which is your client, and he has one special association at his heart, for us, it's really a give back. So that's important as well for you to know that we tailor our CSR uh, program as well around that. Yeah, so you are engaged with a lot of organizations, right? Yes. And then, of course, depending where we are, we try to match as well uh, with the, the, the clients. Like here are some of our clients with whom we've worked in these years. So you really can see which would be upscale, big corporate companies to very high end luxury, uh, luxury brands. Uh, in France and Italy and worldwide. Great. So we received the recognition of Condé Nast for top travel specialists, and that's for the solo travel for couples and families and friends. Very new, congratulations. Thank you very much. In fact, we are in a team. I'm very, very uh, thankful for this great recognition because that has been a hard work. But I think as well, one of the things what we really try to do and like of these special unique experiences, these experiences we transfer also in our uh, incentive travel programs we organize here in Monaco. Awesome. And I told you, we have a holistic approach to events and travel. And uh, for us, that's really important to have a conscious luxury travel and events, but really assist as well in improving our environmental aspect impacts and leave a social uh, legacy in the community. And I think as well uh, that uh, a conscious-based and human-centered approach to do what we do and how we do these things is also an essential component for becoming a religion uh, resilient and also thriving uh, worlds nowadays. So for us as well, we always do believe that uh, the positive impact of travel and that's not only for the travelers, but also for the destinations. So we support the local businesses, preserving the local culture and preserving uh, the local ecosystems. And that's why I put it well the word of the conscious traveler. I think more and more right now as well, we are seen after that we have been closed for various months home and we were more restricted. The travel for sure will come back back. But I think as well, the people will be more conscious when they're traveling. And I already mentioned last year, I wrote an article as well about luxury, because of course Monaco is luxury, but luxury can be also sustainable and meaningful exactly. by integrating not the sustainable only glamour, right? No, not only glamour. And that's why I think it's also, I like glamour, we all like glamour, but Monaco is also much more. And uh, I imagine you've heard about what we say as well about unexpected Monaco. And we really would like to highlight in one way as well the unexpected Monaco, inclusive of the sustainable values. So for sure, you have seen this is already. These are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And there are various uh, goals. I will not start linking them all, but it goes from, for example, from no poverty, which is number one, uh, number three, good health and well-being. Uh, we talk uh, today as well about uh, the life below the water, number 14, Ocean's Day, climate action, number 13, but also partnerships for the goals. And partnerships for the goals is also what we as agencies are able to give a contribution to make a better world. And I don't know if you know the Global Destination Sustainability Index. Uh, it's from Guy Bigwood. And uh, they have created recently the Regenerative Events Checklist. And afterwards, I will share, of course, the presentation uh, with you, and I will put as well the links to them. But perhaps if you are looking for a destination to choose for your next event, you can have a look in this list. And in the listing, you find various destinations who are doing a lot and are committed to sustainable development goals and to sustainability. And Monaco is also among uh, the destinations listed in the list. But I believe it's always good to have it simple because I could talk a long time about it, but I think it's just good to go over of the three possibilities and you're able to think about with every event you're organizing uh, wherever in the world. So let's say reduce the first one on consumption, reduce, reuse and recycle. 
So your ways to encourage a more circular economy, and I'll show you afterwards an example. So we use or you build something, it could be uh, you build in construction and afterwards, after events, you leave it to a local association, wherever you go. Donation of food, and of course, working when uh, preparing the F&B of an event, it's important to look at your numbers, minimum guarantee, in order not to order too much, have a look at what the past has been, and use as well the materials of ask the hotel we are going to, if they have a plan in place, if they what they are able to do with the leftovers of food. Perhaps they have an, an agreement with a local association and the local laws permit that you're able to donate food. Uh, go digital. So why instead of signs, use electronical signage, which is perhaps easy to implement, or an app. And we see the use of apps more and more. Of course, as well, uh, using the right products. In Monaco, we are really lucky we don't have straws anymore. So instead of a cocktail with a plastic straw, we use the aluminium straws, which are, which are able to reuse. Uh, and there are packaging. There are various options in that moment as well to relook. And then, of course, um, with the events we organize, we produce CO2 and we're able to offset that. And I gave the example, for example, before you're able to eliminate and afterwards we see as well an idea why use a bus for transport, why don't use a walking transfer, but also to replant uh, uh, trees for the CO2 emission. We always have a choice, and I know it's, it seems in the beginning always a little bit uh, challenging, and I would never say, do start with all the sustainable uh, goals, choose some to get comfortable with and look what is possible to do. And then we are get more and more acquainted with it, and if you work with a partner as well who's more into it, they're able to assist you as well in the program. So your choice, you have the choice to make a sustainable uh, destination selection, and every destination where you're going to ask them as well what kinds of things uh, the, the destination is doing and the agencies and your partners. Uh, when you choose the venue, look at source, venues that uses uh, sources clean energy. Perhaps they have solar panels, or they have something for the recycling for waste, or they are able to reach by foot. Uh, I always say choose local, uh, sustainable suppliers. And more and more um, suppliers are looking and want to become more uh, sustainable. And then, as well, to uh, sustainable food. So right now, I have to think, of course, your country, you have beautiful uh, and great, delicious coffee. And there are, for example, hotels uh, who are able to serve sustainable coffee and tea. Or perhaps, why not, instead of using all meat meals, change in a program uh, one luncheon and give uh, no meat options, for example. And you're able to, you don't need to take it out, but offer more vegetarian options. And perhaps you say, I want to do, or with a coffee break, um, use juices or fruits. So try to be inventive and play with it as well. Amazing. Important will be as well when you do such a journey because it's really going on a journey as well to inform uh, your uh, guests that you're working on making an event more sustainable. And instead of uh, like we did it as well from last year, everyone, if it's warm, we have these plastic bottles. And I said, no, we are not able to do that not anymore. So right now we have water gallons. And then we gave these. Uh, how you say them again, right now, this name, for the water bottles, you can have sustainable and you can give that as a gift to the client. So it put it in the own water bottle in the conference bag, and then you have the water fill stations. And then they get involved. But when after that, it's important as well that you measure. So you said, okay, you have 200 persons and you stay for four days. So you would say two bottles a day. That means 800 bottles for your stay, calculate what you have, let's say, saved in waste, and you can translate it afterwards in COT, and then communicate that to all the stakeholders with you, with you. Or what you have produced, you can plant as well and share that with your rest as well. But also, when you're more in the exhibition field, uh, it's good as well to educate the exhibitors. But perhaps they are able to, instead, instead of creating a stand, perhaps they can use recycled materials or you can reuse the stand another time. And I've seen as well great things of having uh, wooden and carton uh, seatings which you are able to recycle as well. 
So there's a lot going on also in the exhibiting uh, sector, uh, which really you are able to implement. But important, I think, always think it's transparent. We share your uh, your own, if you're an agency, your efforts in sustainability. But if you're working for a corporate as well, uh, perhaps they have their own sustainability policy as well. And then you work together in finding and creating the sustainability plan as well, that the program you are organizing the event is also in line with their program. And then be transparent what they do and update the guests as well on what you're doing. And Mick, I think um, due to Monaco size, it's so uh, easier uh, as a destination to make more green actions and green events, right? Yes, now we are, uh, as it, it, yes, in one way yet, yeah, because it is Monaco is a smaller destination and also here in the south of France. But I think uh, once you start with this, it's easy to implement. But we are lucky, of course, that Monaco as a country and with uh, uh, the Prince of Ren, that he is very engaged into sustainable development. So we feel that within our partners, the restaurants, but also uh, the transport, um, there are many initiatives which are supporting as well for and are challenging to be more um, sustainable. Yeah. I don't know if someone has questions, but if so, leave them in the chat box to Larissa and afterwards I can always respond to you. Yeah, sure. And Marco Pessoa from La Hat Agencies is asking you about the presentation, if you can, if you can send to him after. Hola, Marco. Of course, with great pleasure, I can share it with you. So I wanted to share with you some uh, ideas of what is possible within an event. Here's an event which uh, we created um, not here in Monaco, but during uh, the Cannes Lions Festival. And there, what you see, all the furniture and the various uh, materials, we donated to a local association. The corporate client, they asked me to find associations with children who were perhaps interested in certain materials, which were the flowers, the florals, the chairs, the furniture. And uh, we left that to local associations. We gave them a list of various options, and then we shared it with them. What you see as well, and that's always nice to implement, is a legacy wall. Uh, if you're very into this gauging as well with uh, your guests, which are there and you're having a meeting, but also during the incentive, during an evening, you can create a uh, legacy wall. And within the legacy wall, you're able to create, like you see here, here's where we made uh, flowers from uh, paper, paper with cards. And then the guests could fill in with a pen, the world uh, would be better if and then you can fill in what you want. That's uh, nice, so cool. And then uh, you really can create these cars uh, and then put them in the legacy wall. And then at the end of the evening, perhaps you can use all these notes the company is able to bring back and perhaps implement or perhaps thank their various things. So it's a way of stimulating, but also yeah, to be there. And the company, of course, can also put out their own messages of what they want like to leave because it's always good to leave a legacy. Legacy is important. Sure. Uh, give back. Uh, this was the same event, so I see this beautiful swing, and I love swings, uh, like other games as well, because it brings me right away back, like in a child mode, and we all, yeah, let's say, uh, worry-free, but also yeah, creative, and it's nice. And this swing we also gave to the local association after the event. Give back. Um, I mentioned before, so Monaco, is a, we are blessed with the destination because a lot of things can be done on walking distance and also can be done um, with uh, the CAM, which is the local bus provider as well, and which you are able to use. And then we also have little boats. So why not, instead of going to your gala dinner, uh, let's walk. We'll do your sightseeing through Monaco. We have this walking tour, and it's great to walk as well. And without with walking, it's the easy way to implement, and you're saving a lot of CO2 emission. And normally, you can combine it as well. Or if you're more sportive, why not organize a walk or run in the morning with the guests? And then, would you say if you can make a CSR initiative as well? You raise money walking, you decide how many kilometers, or and then you gave it to the good um, charity or foundation you would like to use. 
Um, so, Ben Pegnu, Monaco has its own language, and that, of course, is also like a sustainable uh, goal because it's important to maintain culture and uh, the authenticity of a country. And children here in school are taught Monegasque, which is called Monegou. And uh, we also, in our programs, we like to share these local uh, yeah, secrets together with you to really give the Monaco flavor as well and transport you within the destination. Wow. So, made in Monaco, uh, you don't see me yet, but uh, red and white are the colors of Monaco. <laughs> and made in Monaco are also things, our destination, what we are able to offer you as well, links to the sustainable values and the circular economy. And I've prepared a small uh, overview of some of the things, which will be also able to, you can use them in your program proposals here with the things in Monaco. So, why not? An encounter with a Monaco entrepreneur. We always like to meet businesses, other people. And of course, there are various options and possibilities. We can go from finance we, to communications, to healthcare, to fashion. And then I said, okay, for today, let's choose a sustainable initiative and as well an example of circular economy and also something which could be interesting. Uh, Jessica, she's an entrepreneur here in Monaco. And uh, she also has uh, heaves underneath, you see them, so bees. And she has her own gardens where she cultivates as well, uh, let's say on the top of the buildings as well, vegetables. But also she has the, uh, these heaves where the uh, house where the bees are in there. And she will tell you more about what she's doing and how she created it. And for the guests, it's also a fun thing because they will be able to visit the garden where all the products are. She will tell you about the local produce. Uh, there are even chickens and then as well the, the bees. And if you would like to do something, you're able as well to sponsor a, a hive. And that one uh, perhaps would be nice. There is, this is um, one of the gardens she has and in a private uh, apartment, luxury apartment building, uh, and it's really in the center of Monaco. I am a big fan of Jessica, Nick. Yeah, me too. I love her. So she's really great. Um, culture. We all would like to know behind the scenes. And what better if you're able to do that as well, combining with someone who is an expert in something special. If you are interested to know more about the art scene and Monaco, as you probably know, with the ballet and the, the opera and also the other cultural expressions with all the artists, uh, it's a flourishing community. So we are able to organize a private uh, visit, open uh, special locations, but also go to an atelier and then organize a meeting, uh, perhaps even private performance of ballet or opera or that a painter will explain you things in Monaco. And these are from these uh, yeah, special opportunities which you really say, yeah, this is something uh, special and that leaves a real uh, powerful commitment as well and linked to the destination. We all like to know more about uh, how people live in Monaco and I chose this villa because it's quite impactful to see but we have various uh, people here in Monaco living who would like to open their home uh, and share um, their things with you and I already told you their background could be different it could be let's say a family it could be where you organize a cookery lesson it could be where you do uh, an exchange on the economy uh, it could be on various arguments on healthcare and there they are opening up their home and it could be for smaller groups so you can divide your incentive group in smaller guests groups from four to six but there are also some places where we're able to welcome when they have a private parent to 50 60 persons so and then we can organize the various uh, encounters with locals uh, with the interest of your guests Mick, your if i'm not wrong this one this property it's from a guy that has a huge car collections right uh yes they do have and also a wine collection unique. Uh, this is really uh, unique and this is also a place that they are open as well amazing, for special events place to organize an event mm -hmm. yes 
but there are also normal, uh, normal homes in Monaco. There are also normal things, but also very upscale of famous artists as well, which open their homes uh, to welcome uh, guests. I love this very much because you see as well the uh, La Turbie up there and the nature as well. And it makes you dream as well to think about Monaco. Then we go from one thing to our only fisherman here in Monaco. And uh, he is great because we um, often, we like to visit him because we can see the local uh, catch. Today, a lot of restaurants in Monaco work with him as well because he's the only main uh, fisherman. And uh, it's also a great place if you would like to have an authentic luncheon. And he's really a, a fun uh, personality as well. Um, already gave you the example, we can walk, but we can also take a, a boat. Like here's the solar uh, boat bus. And why not insert instead of walking? I mean, it's always, I always say, Monaco to see from the sea is completely different than uh, walking from Monaco itself. Because then you have a, a beautiful view on the Monte Carlo district, on the Condamine, but also on uh, Le Rocher. And it's a short ride, only five, six minutes. And um, it's a great way thing to insert in your uh, program. And you're also sustainable. Um, this is a once of a lifetime experience. And this is, yes, someone who is uh, diving. And this is uh, Pierre Froller. I don't know if you heard about him. He is quadruple world apnea diving record holder. And he's also ambassador of the foundation of Princess uh, Charlene. And he's very engaged into environmental awareness. And what are you able to do? Of course, depending a little bit on your time you have, we are all able to organize private uh, snorkeling, or scuba diving, scuba diving lessons together with him, or otherwise with more. And he can come as well to give a lecture um, explaining more about the life underwater, but also the, the colorful marine life which Monaco had. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, just a little, just few Brazilians know about the possibility of diving in Monaco. Ah, okay, good. Well, I'm happy. We always look for the unexpected as well. Exactly. Um, so I already told you, Monaco shines the best from the sea. We uh, love new companies, and as we as well we have a different way of working. Uh, we have our office in Monaco, but when I travel, I always work as well from co-working spaces because that's where I find as well my inspiration. And we have a very lively startup scene uh, here in Monaco. And we ourselves are also part of the Monaco Economic Board. And that's why I also mentioned this thing made in Monaco, because we really uh, always like to involve the startup scene of Monaco, because there are a lot of great uh, ideas of young people. And this is one of the boats here in Monaco, created and presented last year. And it's completely solar, so renewable, uh, so it's really ecological. You're able to use this boat for why not a nice shore excursion or uh, go for a, to a place where you want to go for uh, lunch or dinner with a transfer. And you're really able to make a very nice experience on the sea. But it's also a way to see and experience uh, the Monaco uh, startups and this one right now moves to the second stage, but they came out of uh, Monaco uh, startup. And um, they are also available to come to an event to speak or tell them what they're doing. So if you have a company who is more into automotive or in sustainable development, there are various options as well to connect with you and have them, let's see, uh, an element within the visits we are proposing for Monaco, because of course we all ha always have the, the normal, the regular visits, but we always have uh, the sustainable approach and the values is in all the things we do. But today I wanted to highlight some specific uh, Monaco uh, special things, let's yeah, say. And learn, right? Learn a little bit yeah. more with innovation. Very good. Yeah. Good practice. So the so here, exchange with local enterprises. And this is another uh, example of Monaco. They are not startup anymore, for sure. It's uh, Venturi. And um, we love the Grand Prix. And it's a great event. But we also like very much the IPRI, which will be done again next year. And then for sure as well, right now, I show you right away, because I said, of course, I have to do it right away. 
for you. I included Felipe Massa because, of course, he is being Brazilian. He is able as well. He's driver of um, one of the Venturi teams right now. Mm, that's nice. I didn't know. Okay, and uh, I wanted to link. So there are much more Brazilians here living in Monaco than you probably know. But he is one of them as well, and he's also very engaged in sustainable development as well. And here you see an example of what we have done with a company who came for uh, a meeting as well within their program, and we always like to enhance and showcase as well the Monaco companies. So we asked if they were able to showcase their. Uh, one of their uh, EPRI cars as well, and afterwards they participated in a panel as well, talking about uh, sustainable uh, development, but also within links to the EPRI as well, and about transports. So there you see completely another intake as well, much more on content, but involving local uh, excellences. Philippe nice. Massa. Uh, yeah, but of course, depending on the budget they have and what your availability is and his availability, uh, we can engage and have important personalities be present at your event as well. And this is, uh, we love art. I love art and culture. And uh, there are various big personalities living here in Monaco. So perhaps you would like to have them in your, in your event or you would like to have an encounter, I already mentioned before, uh, this is Andrea Bocelli, uh, but there are other artists living here in Monaco, Andrea doesn't hear. I, I saw a picture of you with him. <laughs> uh, yes, because uh, we have a very uh, good relationship oh, with uh, nice. Andrea since many, many years. And I just, before coming to Monaco, when I started my work in the events business, when it started, oh, uh, I arrived in Florence, in Italy. And uh, you, you know, I had there Andrea Bocelli for a uh, German incentive, and I hardly dare to say it, but he came for not even 500 uh, thousand liras so that means 500 euros more or less wow. and he was only a piano bar singer and he performed at that event and it was long before he was well known so since that time I already know him and as well my partner also has a long relationship with him and that's why it's such a musical thing and uh, that's why but thank you for remembering that's nice, <laughs> that's nice. Um, right now, I'll take you as well a little bit in a journey outside of Monaco, because Monaco, right now you have an idea, but perhaps you would like to showcase as well something in the near surroundings. And uh, perfume, of course, is well known. We all ladies, but also gentlemen, we like perfume. And a lot of flowers are here, you can find in the south of France. So, of course, there are wonderful places where you're able to go and do more of the commercial shopping, but we also want to have this real authentic experience. So we're able to take you to a place where they have these magnificent rose fields of jasmine, and the guests are able to go into the fields, pick the petals, but also learn from a nose, but also from the people itself who are making all these roses as bases for perfumes, know more about what they are doing. And that's just another intake on a special visit and that's something uh, really unique nice really. arts uh, of course all the uh, big museums are uh, in paris with the big names but also here in the south we have various great mu museums and exhibitions and i must always mention the monaco art scene i mentioned before as well So now we are back. Uh, does anyone can hear us? Pessoal, puder dar um ok se a gente estão ouvindo a gente agora. Nós tivemos problemas de conexão, mas estamos de volta agora. Beleza. We are back, Mick. Just okay. Desculpa, obrigada. Here we go again. So I was taking you to the immersion of local arts. I was telling great museums we have here in Monaco and private collections you are able to visit. Why not? also discover your inner artist do something different as well and you, this is outside uh, but you can also do it here in one of the gardens of Monaco you can make the request and then with the help of a local uh, painter you are able to uh, paint and here this is a special itinerary we created in the footsteps of Renoir which is well known and afterwards for this guest to give you as well an idea it's great we love picnics and we created 
uh, chic picnics in the countryside or along the seaside. There are various options. But discovering the inner artist is always a great thing to do, to start. Of course, even right now, we'd love to be outside in the countryside. Uh, in Monaco, we have regular bikes, but also e-bikes, and we're able to create a special itinerary. And really, it's on all levels. So we are able to do for the more advanced, where it is more hilly, but there's also in the surroundings where we're able to take the guests and then um, from there discover Monaco with an e-bike. What we always try to do as well with these things, of course, we have a professional uh, teacher with you. You have all the safety uh, things here. These people didn't want to wear a helmet, but we have everything at disposal and we're hopefully always in invite guests to use the helmets but we create a special itinerary as well where we have the local encounters where you are able to taste some local specialties of course going on a bike we avoid wines but there's beautiful cheeses and honey and marmalades and there are various nice things you're able to do and have a stop with a nice coffee and enjoy a croissant in the vineyard. So it's really a nice way to explore as well the surroundings of Monaco in a sustainable way. Wine, of course, gastronomy are important, and um, tradition, passion, innovation, and intuition are the full driving forces of the family we know here, just outside of Monaco, and they make uh, very important uh, French wine. And, and the feeling is really, it's not only to really to get inside the brand of this wine uh, winery in the States, where you will welcome by the people and the guests, uh, and they will really take you inside the journey and explain and share with you more what it is about making wines and how they do it. And if you are in a good moment there in full, perhaps you're even able to see and help with the harvest. So these are some really hands-on experiences where you have a local exchange with the local community, which are always very, very powerful. And we arrived to the uh, end of our presentation and um, we hope that we were able to inspire you. And these were only a selection uh, for some of the things, but uh, we have, we try to be as well always very uh, powerful and also to find new things and I invite you to follow us on our social media, on Instagram, Facebook or LinkedIn or what you prefer. Also the latest updates on uh, Monaco. And if you have any questions, uh, Larissa, I don't know if you receive something, it will sure. be a pleasure to respond to your Great. the questions you might have. As we don't have any questions, only Marco Pessoa that asked, I think you have the connection, with the, we have the email from Marco, Miki, and then you can yeah. send to him the, the presentation. Yes, of course, and with great pleasure, I can share it as well uh, yes. with others. No problems, you let me know. It will be a great pleasure. And then, of course, what we said as well, if people would like to know more about sustainability, of course, we are able to share more, let's say, uh, technical insight. But I think you know in your field, and hopefully as well, the passion of what we have for our beautiful destination, but also on these uh, sustainable values, which are really uh, part of our... Uh, yeah, Inspire Me team, and we love yes. to always to share as well with uh, you, Larissa, your team, and all exactly. Brazilian We can connect people. you with all the Brazilian agencies that are interested in Green Actions, and I'm sure that you attend them very well. Thank you, thank you. So that's it, Miki. Thank you so much, dear, for your time, for your your knowledge, everything that you have been made for this work here. So it's very, very inspi inspiring. Obrigada, Larissa. And I so, hope to see you all very soon. And for right I now, I hope so. say, I miss you and I miss Monaco. We miss you too. But right now, be bold, be, be positive, safe. and stay healthy. Exactly. Bye bye, dear. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye bye.